Oh, I see. Over there by the playground. And speaking of playgrounds, it's about time I got to building you one. First, I'm going to build you a big sandbox. And then we can make big sand castles and you can make mud oh, pies. Oh, that sounds delicious. Delicious. <laughs> listen, thank you for going over to get her this morning. Oh, listen, I missed her at breakfast, so I, I had to go over and get her early. Yeah. Listen, I'd like to talk to you about Rebecca. Okay. I don't know. Oh, sweetie, why don't you just play here? There's your cookies. There's Mr. Clown. Okay. Well, I still can't believe what she told us last night. I don't know what to believe anymore. Well, I know one thing for sure is you didn't push her off that cliff. I wish I was sure about that. Look how loving you are with Stacy. Look how gentle you are. You could never hurt anybody. Yes. Maybe you're right. I don't know, but she did go over that cliff. I know she didn't, she didn't jump off. So someone had to push her. But you didn't do it. You did not push her. And you know that as well as I do. You know, you've got to realize that you help so many people. Like, like Mrs. Renfield, you know, I was thinking, Mrs. Renfield, you helped her when her husband died. You helped Tony set up his business. You helped Stacy and I. You gave us a place to live. And Mr. Chamberlain, you gave him something that he's always dreamed of, a son that he can be proud of. Yes, but Rebecca's a different story No, it's, it's not different with Rebecca. You took care of her, and you gave her a place to live when she first came to Springfield. Yes, but I'm responsible for what she's gone through. But you don't even know, you don't even remember what happened. Look, you've got to stop blaming yourself for this. It's the same thing that happened with Professor Renfield. You blamed yourself for that, and it wasn't your fault. And you've got to stop blaming yourself for this. Yes, but Rebecca was carrying my child. All right. I want you to look me in the eye. I want you to tell me that you pushed her off the cliff. No. I don't think I pushed her. I, oh, if I could only remember exactly what happened that night. Well, it seems to me that the only person who remembers it is Rebecca, and she seems to have her own version, and she's determined to stick to it. I'm worried about her. I think that she needs some help. You're incredible. What? Oh, I mean, here Rebecca comes over, makes a scene last night and you're not angry you're not upset you're not jealous you're you're concerned about her well so are you yes yes i admit i am i've never seen her in the state that she was in last night and you're absolutely right she does need some help you know what i think mm. i think you should try to find her today and i think you, you should try to convince her to uh get some help to see somebody for you, I'll do it. Oh, Can I come in? Oh, yes. hi, Mom. Hi. How are you? I'm not interrupting anything, am I? No, oh, no. no. Uh, let me go check on the baby first. Why don't you visit with your mother for a while? I'll go check on the baby. Oh, all right. Well, what's up? Not much. What's new with you? You want to find out what happened after we left the boarding house last night, right? Oh, well, I don't want you to think I'm nosy. But? But I can't help myself. Tell me what happened. What in the world did Rebecca want to say to Quinn? What? Well, it's nothing to worry about. Uh, Stacy just has something she'd like to show you. Well, what is it? What has she done? Well, she's uh, gotten out of her crib all by herself. Really? Yes, ma'am. Oh, really? Well, you... you were only 18 months old when you climbed out of the crib. I better go see this. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Ridden, uh, could you wait here for a moment? I have to talk to you about something. Sure. Hey, is anything wrong? No, no. I just have a very important question I'd like to ask you. <clears throat> w won't you uh, sit down? Uh, well, what is it? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, Mrs. Reardon, may I have Nola's hand? Her hand? In marriage. I don't believe this. I just don't believe it. 
Um, I, I admit it's a, it's a bit old-fashioned. I just don't believe it. Well, you and Nola, you're very close. She always comes to you from for uh, comfort and 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 advice. I, I I just wanted your blessing. Oh no, Nola is is on her own now. She makes her own decisions. Obviously, one of them was not to tell me she was engaged. I just don't believe it. She's not engaged. She's not. No, I haven't asked her to marry me yet. You haven't? No, first I wanted to see if you had any objections. I, I just don't believe this. Well, when do you think you're going to ask her? Later this week. I have a very special dinner in mind. Oh, I see. Something romantic. Oh, very, very romantic. I've, I've ordered champagne. And caviar. Yeah, a little corner table. Formal dress. Black tie, as a matter of fact. <laughs> and violins. Well, I don't know about the violins, oh. but I'll tell you that the atmosphere will be very romantic. I, I promise. Quint, you could propose to her in a burger hut, and it would be very romantic. Your question is going to make the whole evening. Well, uh, speaking of questions, may I have Nola's hand in marriage? Yes, Quint, you can have both her hands. Then you don't have any objections. No, I think you'll make her very happy. Oh, I hope so. I hope so. Now, can I ask you an, an old-fashioned question? Uh, certainly. Would you like to give your future mother-in-law a great big hug? I think that's the right thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and uh, Mrs. Uh, B. B, you uh, won't tell Nola, will you? Oh, of course not. I'm going to let you ask all the questions. Thank you. Thank you.